Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. What's, uh, what got dragged to the shop today? Well, actually, I drove here. 2016 Dodge Grand Caravan. Pentastar 3.6 Classic. Um, what's the customer complaint? Well, he bought the van at you know 180,000 miles. It had the Pentastar tick where the camshaft roller followers get messed up. They eat the cam lobe. So he replaced one cam, bank one intake, and all new uh, rollers. And then he said he fired it up and got a P0018. Now that code is for bank two exhaust. Interesting. Then he's like, well, maybe the exhaust cam is messed up. So he replaced that. All OE parts still had the code. And he replaced all four phasers. Still has the P0018. He finally threw in the towel, brought, drove it here, and said, figure it out. So we're here. Let's scan it for codes and see why this uh, Dodge is setting a P0018 trouble code. All right, we're in the van. Sure enough, there it is, P0018. Camshaft position correlation, bank two, sensor one. Now sensor one, it's a little confusing, that's the exhaust camshaft. And sensor two is the intake camshaft. That's just the way they label them. So what I want to do is fire this thing up and look at live data. So in data stream, we want to search for cam. Here we go. So on Chrysler's, what you want to look at is this crank difference. So exhaust one cam, uh, exhaust cam two crank difference and intake, intake. Okay, just graph those. You can see in memory, exhaust cam two is at 22 degrees. The other ones are pretty close to zero. Let's fire it up. By the way, it runs fairly smoothly. I mean, the guy drove it here. It's not shaking. It might, might be a little, you know, revs up. Seems to run okay. Got your dinging, got your Christmas tree. And uh, these are real numbers here. And on Chrysler's, they're actually very accurate. So when it's saying minus three degrees from whatever spec, so, you know, if the cam chain is a little bit stretched, it'll be slightly retarded. And Intake cam 2 is minus 1 degree, intake cam 1 minus 4 degrees, exhaust cam 1 minus 6 degrees. Exhaust cam 2, that's the first cam that's driven by the chain, there's actually three chains, uh, plus 23 degrees. That's crazy. So this number here, can we explain why is it 23 degrees? We don't even need to get a scope out because I do trust these numbers. Let's pull in the shop and make a game plan. Alright, so let's look up some service information on this timing system. So again, two banks, four cams, and this is the entire layout. So like I was saying, there's three chains. The primary chain, then the secondary chains go to bank one, bank two. So we're worried about this cam right here front of the engine, exhaust cam. Um, they give you nice pictures of all the marks that should line up. So my first question is, could we be a tooth off just on the exhaust cam? 22 degrees, you know, that number wouldn't match up as, you know, a multiple of teeth. Now, let's look up a picture of these cams, of the sprocket. Count the number of teeth. Go ahead and do that. We have 33 teeth. So one camshaft revolution is 720 of the crank. So we want to divide 720 by 33 and see how many degrees crank is one tooth on the camshaft. So pretty easy to do. 720 divided by 33. Look at that very suspicious, 22 degrees. So our data was saying plus 22 
degrees, so this exhaust bank 2 is advanced according to the computer. How do we verify that on the van? We have to remove the front valve cover and line up these marks. So the marks are going to be arrows or lines. So lines here, arrows over here. So on bank two, the arrows should point towards each other, and it tells you there's 12 links between these notches on the phasers. Okay? And keep in mind, everything is replaced. Phasers, intake, and exhaust are not interchangeable. That's why we have the intake stamped right there on the picture. And then let's pull the valve cover off and see if we're a tooth off. That's going to be my first suspicion. Um, so that's the next logical step in this diagnosis. By the way here, uh, the owner is nice enough to provide all the original old parts. You can see that must have been the uh, intake cam that got severely chewed by the roller. So RI is right intake. And then he replaced, this should be left exhaust, LE. Okay. And he was doing marks over here, and then we've got some cam sensors over here. These are the dual type. Then we have intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, all four phasers. So I'm sure it didn't, didn't need any of these parts. I'm hoping it were just a tooth off on the actual sprocket on bank two exhaust. So let's uh, go under the hood. Okay, under the hood, we're worried about bank two exhaust so this cam right here so let me peel back the onion a little bit get the air box out of the way power steering reservoir we could try to take off just the uh, um, oil control valves and see maybe with a bore scope see if the lines light up line up there um, we have to take off this valve cover anyways we're going to do the repair intake manifold has to come off that's not too hard just uh, like eight bolts there let me uh, do that real quick and we'll see what's going on. Alright, I think we have an answer. So, look at the arrows. I put the intake in line with the head. This arrow is up. So we are one tooth advanced on the exhaust cam. Let's count the pins. There's supposed to be 12 pins from this notch to this notch right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 pins. Again, one notch advanced. This hole is straight up. This hole is a little bit forward. All of the signs point to one tooth advanced on the exhaust cam. So we need to turn this cam back one tooth. What's the easiest way to do that? Well, we can try to detension the chain. Grab this, um, you know, put the slack right here and just kind of roll it over one tooth. I don't know if that's going to work. Otherwise, you have to take the phaser off, take this big bolt out, take the camshaft out, and then shift it one tooth. But either way, we have to shift it back one tooth and this van will be fixed. Alright, so customer authorized the repair. We just need to reset this camshaft back by one tooth. What's the easiest way to do that? We have to retract this tensioner and to do that, there's a little pawl. You have to come in from the side with a bent, I'm using a bent bicycle spoke just with a little L. Pull that up and then push the tensioner in and then try to put a grenade pin in here. I don't know if that's holding it, but I got a wrench right here anyways. So all the slack is now right here at the exhaust cam. Okay? So we can't just jump one tooth because this timing guy's in the way. We actually have to lift up the camshaft a little bit and shift it one, one tooth. So I have all the cam caps loose. Let me take those off and we'll carefully shift it one tooth. Alright, so the only way to really do it is take off the phaser off of the camshaft, shift it one tooth, turn the camshaft back, and then mate them back together while keeping the tensioner depressed. So I'm using this plastic wedge because the grenade pin isn't very useful. 
Um, now we're just going to put the cam caps back on carefully. Make sure the marks are aligned before you tighten everything down. So let's count the number of pins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this cam went back one tooth. So let me tighten everything down, release the tensioner, make sure everything is happy in its happy spot and uh, should be in good shape. So keep in mind these holes should be you know, aligned. Once we release the tension, then everything should sit you know, where it's uh, sit the spec. All right, so we're in great shape. Everything is torqued to spec, camshaft is back on, the big bolt is uh, holding the phaser to the camshaft. And our arrows are aligned, our holes are aligned, everything is happy. 12 pins. So let's put everything back together, make sure this thing runs like a top. Alright, before we uh, finish this thing up, let's check the fluids. Oil is good. Coolant is quite low. Nothing in the reservoir. Big bubble in the radiator. I swear, Ed. Eight out of ten cars that come in, fluids are low, unfortunately. So we'll top that off and uh, clear the codes out, see how it runs. All right, post repair code scan. Let's clear all these out. Low tire pressure. Well, geez, let's pump up the tires too. Alright, let's fire this thing up. It's much happier. Go for a spin. Seems to run smoother already. So far so good. TPMS is still fussing for some reason. Get the Pentastar V6 pull. It's all happy. Fantastic. Alright, so known good cam difference. Now it's actually phasing the cams, but it started at about minus seven there, almost zero on exhaust cam two. So perfect. Cam changed a little bit stretched, so exhaust cam one, that's the last one. It's gonna be a little more retarded than than bank two. But I like it. This van's fixed.